Life would have been easy if that's all there was to it, but it wasn't. I was taken home with my mother and I remember the voice of the person who was supposed to be my daddy. Now how are we going to take care of one more child? We can't afford the ones we have. How could you be so stupid? My mother's arm tightened around me as she cried softly. I knew she was crying because tears fell upon me, but I didn't hear her. That was something I would get used to, seeing her crying but not hearing her. I'm not sure what happened, but she cried a lot. The daddy cussed and yelled a lot. The other people, my brothers and the sister, fussed a lot. Always bickering about something. That's mine. No, it ain't. You broke yours. Give it back. I'm going to tell Mama. Go ahead and tell her, you little snitch. Watch what happens when she's not around. And it went on and on and on for most of my life. Here I was, trapped into being in a family that did not want me and made life hellish from one moment to the next. After I got old enough to sit on my own and then walk and feed myself, people for the most part left me alone. It was almost as if I wasn't even there. Almost. I was noticed if I got in someone's way and shoved to the side. I was noticed when I cried and sometimes my cries were quickly suppressed by the closest person to me. I realized early in my life that no one was interested in hearing my voice for any reason. This was made abundantly clear when I started talking. The response I heard most was, shut up. My mother tried, I guess to the best of her ability, but she was outnumbered and was not always around to see what was being done to me. Left at the table, unable to get down on my own, locked into the bathroom, unable to leave when I finished doing what I was supposed to do, and left out of feeling loved and wanted because no one wanted me, not even my mother, I began to think. As time moved forward and I began to sprout up and outward, my brothers began to pay more attention to me than they should have. They began touching me and making me squirm with the comments they made. I told my sister and she just shrugged it off saying, that's the way they are. They'll stop sooner or later. My sister was three years older than I was, so I thought she knew what she was talking about. It turned out she didn't. The boys were all older than us. The oldest one was seven years older than me. The next one was five years older than me. And then there was my sister. By the time I was 10, I had been molested by both of my brothers, and no one believed me when I tried to tell it. My sister just rolled her eyes. My mother didn't have time to hear it. And my daddy, he looked at me real funny like.